All right, so um, I don't know if you saw my feed uh, for Facebook, but this session will be broadcast on Facebook Live. So if you do not want to have your face appear when you're in absolute agony, give, give her the evil eye, and she will know to stand off a little bit. So welcome to Myofascial Release. Myofascial Release is uh, well, it's a new practice that is beginning to gain momentum in the fitness and the yoga industry and it's also something that's really accessible even if you are not actively doing yoga or you're not actively in the gym it is something that doesn't require a lot of mobility and strength but it allows you to assess um, the openness and the good feelings that you would get when you are um, doing a yoga first so sometimes we get addicted to that practice and we get addicted to that feeling of how you feel after the yoga class because your blood is flowing, your energy is high, you know you feel good and you don't quite know why. And you get addicted to that. So you think, okay, if this amount of yoga makes me feel this good, or this amount of working out makes me feel this good, if I am stretching this much and I feel good, I have to do more in order to feel better. And so we get addicted to the repetitive um, movements that we do in yoga. We get addicted thinking, if I do more, I'm going to be better. If I do more, I'm going to be better. And then you end up getting injured. And then you get very demoralized because you're like, I should be able to do that because all those people that put up these posts on Instagram are doing these things every day and they look good. So I should be able to feel good too. But what you don't realize is that everything needs to be in balance and even something like a yoga practice, even something like a gym routine or a fitness routine also has to be balanced with other things in your life and you can't overdo any one particular thing. Myofascial release allows you to assess the same feeling of openness, the same feeling of blood flow, that feel good sensations that you get in the body without having to put yourself in positions which would compromise your joint stability or that would overwork your muscles. So this would be something that you could do even if you suck at yoga, even if you have back pain and you can't really move very much, even if you are not very comfortable on a yoga mat, this would be something that you can do and that you can follow even when you're at home. So what we'll be doing today is we'll be going through a very, very basic session. I'm going to put you through the session as I talk to you about the benefits of this practice so that, well, as it's, it's always easier to understand what's going on when you can feel it on the inside of the body. So as we're going through this, what I need you to do is to make sure that you have enough room on your mat to swing your arms out this way and to extend your arms out like that. So if you're really close in, you might want to shift around. You don't have to be linear, you can turn your mat, you can move around a little bit. Just make sure that you've got enough space when you're lying down to be able to do that without your head smacking someone in the face. Right? As you do these movements, you're going to find that these little balls are no longer so adorable. They are quite hard and these will um, be very, very significant in sensation. Um, our normal reaction to having something that is painful is to go tense and to resist. I need you to try your best to relax into that sensation and to just allow that healing to come into the body, to allow that openness to come into the body. What we're releasing as we do this practice, we're releasing the connective tissue that retains all our tension, that retains our, our emotional locks. This um, feeling of all of this will allow you to be a lot more mobile, to be a lot more comfortable, and you'll feel the difference almost immediately as you go through this practice. So I have people who come to me and after that, they say, I've had this shoulder pain for months. I came for this one session and I felt this, and it went, oh, and I'm free. So this will be something that will be very liberating if you came here and your energy is quite low or you're generally not a very active and spiky person, mm -hmm. you're going to find that, hey, my energy is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to suddenly remember situations and emotions that may have been tucked away at the back of my head. We experience emotions not just with the heart and with the head, but we experience emotions with the entire body. Mm -hmm. When someone makes you angry, you experience that anger with every single muscle in your body. 
when someone makes you sad, when you go through heartbreak. That heartbreak can sometimes feel worse than getting a really, really bad virus and it affects your entire body. So as we're going through these uh, myofascial points, you might find that it also allows you to come into a state of calmness that you may not have assessed for a very long time. This is something that's very normal to the practice. I do have people who start bursting into tears in the middle of the class. Not because it's painful, <laughs> also because it's painful, but not because it's painful. Because they have these emotions. I have like this, this um, guy who paid for a class. He's this dude, right? Butch fella. And he started crying in the class because he said, my dad passed away three years ago. I never cried. And suddenly I just feel this overwhelming desire to do so. I'm not sad. I don't know what's going on, but it's just happening. You know, so there will be some reactions. And I'd like you to be very forthcoming in sharing what those feelings are, be reactive, make as much noise as you want as you're going through this practice. It also gives me an indication of what's going on inside of you and it will allow me to understand the inner functions of your body as well. Alright, so we are going to work with our first uh, position which is going to be to release the shoulders. This uh, position is not just for the tightness of the shoulders but it is also to release the emotions of anxiety or of stress that tend to be trapped in the shoulders. So sometimes someone will tell you, you have tight shoulders, or you have, I have a tight shoulder. Your shoulders are very tight, your neck is very tight. What does that actually mean? It doesn't mean that the muscle is physically restrictive. What that means is that your brain is not able to send a signal to tell that muscle to relax. In doing my pressure release, we are able to clear that passageway to allow the brain to communicate with that muscle. So as we're going through this, you may find that what you thought was your regular range of motion is going to become something a little bit more. What a stretch that you normally would have been able to do with difficulty will become a stretch that becomes a lot more comfortable or a lot more easy. So myofascial release is going to be quite an uh, interesting experience for some of you. Alright, so this is how we are going to start out. I'm going to show you first of all because some of you have not done this before. And also this is something that you're going to be doing lying down. So if you, um, if you can, you will later on be able to follow me just from the verbal cues. So we're going to start by lying down on the back. One ball in each hand this way. And just lie down this way. Let your shoulders relax. When you're lying down, just make sure your chest is facing the ceiling and the body is comfortable, the spine is aligned, everything is comfortable and relaxed. You use your right hand, hold the left elbow, lift the shoulder and push that ball as far behind the right shoulder as you're able to. And then you're going to readjust, let your chest come back to the center and just do very gentle movements to find the best place for the ball. Now when I say best place for the ball, at this point you're wondering, what's that? It's very intuitive. Once you're lying down, you will know what I mean. You will roll around a little bit and there'll be a little bit of a groove where you're gonna feel, oh, that's the right place I need to stay. And you'll feel this immediate release in your shoulders, immediate release in the whole upper back. It might shoot down this arm, it's all right. Just relax and let the back of the right shoulder melt into the ball. After a while, I'll ask you to raise the right hand up, extend the palm to the right corner of the mat, don't lock the elbow, and just allow the new position to take its form. From there, you may want to shift around a little bit more, just allow the ball to penetrate a little bit deeper into the fascia and into the joints of the muscles. And then from there, you will use your hand, lift up the head, and try to bring the other ball over this way as well. Support the head first, shift your right hand over to the left shoulder, hold the elbow stretch, relax your right arm, and then slowly go down and align. You may want to shift a little bit higher depending on the length of your shoulders, and let the back of your head rest on that arm and just relax down this way. Use your hips and round down your spine if you understand what a pelvic tilt is, press down the back of your waist and tuck a little bit into hips to make more contact with the floor and the ball. And then from here, lift the hips up, push equal weight into the ball. 
and we're gonna hold it there for a while. If you're easily tired, just bring it down and then lift it up again and feel the ball release your shoulder. After this, I will ask you to lower the hips down, keep the ball there, left hand release, right hand out, right hand goes out towards the side like this. And then from there, you bring your knees into the chest and you do a little sweep over towards the right side this way. Use your palm, shift the shoulder down, look over to the side, lengthen into the side of the leg this way. From there, once you're comfortable and this is the deepest twist you can achieve, bring the palm up, extend and drop the arm all the way, overhead this way. Keep the elbow slightly bent, veer a little bit towards the side, stretch and hold it there. And the ball will just do its work. You don't have to agree against the ball, you just need to relax into it. But in this position, if you're not absolutely in agony, what you can <laughs> do is a very gentle side to side motion this way to draw the shoulder blade out a little bit and back from there. Alright, let's get cracking. Literally. Okay, so everyone lie on your back. Good luck in this. You might want to be more towards the center of your mat than the top of your mat, yeah? So have one ball in each hand. Just feel what your shoulders are like right now. So just let them relax into the floor. Now have one ball in each hand. Lift the right shoulder up. Use your left hand. Hold the right uh, left elbow with the right hand. And bring the ball as far behind the right shoulder as you're able to. Pressing down into the ball. Letting your right hand drop down to the floor just for all next few hips. Left hand drop down next to the hips. And then just let your chest come to the center. Turn your head, shift around. Find the little groove at the inner tight of the shoulder. And just relax into the ball. How's everyone doing? Can you feel the ball? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So try to bring the back of your bra and the back of the waist on the right side downwards to relax into the floor. Your instinct will be to tense against that sensation. Just relax into the floor. Raise your right hand towards the ceiling with the ball and drop the right arm in a relaxed state to the right top corner of the mat. And pull your body slightly away from the resting right arm. Adjust your hips and then lower down the back of your waist again. You may want to do a slight side to side movement. Just relax into the ball. Are you okay? Yo, really? <laughs> <laughs> right, so um, bring your left ear to the mat and look over to the left side. Stretch. Come back to the center with your head. Bring your left palm behind the back of your head. Keep the right hand on the floor and lift your head up. Stretch the back of your neck and look forwards towards your knees. Try to press down the back of your waist, particularly on the right side. Now you've got a ball in your right hand. Bend the right elbow and just pop that ball on top of the one that's already there. Extend your right hand over it once again. Shift your body about an inch upwards and then bring your head back to the floor just for a while. And adjust to the two balls being there. You might want to roll a little bit left and right, a little bit up and down. Allow the ball to find that groove. Is everybody still with me? See, I told you these balls are not adorable, they are evil. Right now, lift your head up again and bring your right palm to the back of your left shoulder blade. Use your left hand, hold the right palm, elbow, shift it more to the left, and drop back down onto the floor. And then just let the weight of your head and the strength of that left arm 
ground down. Now you can shift around a bit. How's everyone doing? Okay, relax there for a while. Try to press down the back of your waist. Think of a Pilates pelvic tilt. So relax the ribcage, draw down the back of your waist. Engage the back of your thigh where your thigh meets your butt and lift your hips up and push into the balls. And you don't have to do very much, you just have to stay there. So you don't have to agitate the ball, you don't have to pounce on it or bounce on it. All you need to do is let your body hold a structure that allows your shoulder to rest into the ball. From here, slowly lower the hips down and bring the back of your waist to the ground again. And then one more time, come back upwards. Push a little bit more into the balls. So you might want to bring your hips a little bit higher. And then slowly bring your hips down. Let your right hip relax to the floor. Let the left hip relax to the floor. Keep the balls in that position. Your left hand will go out to the left side with the palm of the ground. Free the right hand, drop the hip to the floor, and bring your right hand down to the right side now. Shift your hips a little bit towards the left side. This will enable the spinal twist a bit better. Knees in towards your chest. Give a little swing and bring your knees over towards the right side. Use your right hand and hold the outside of your left knee. Left hand on the floor by the side of the body to adjust. Raise your right palm to the ceiling and stretch the right hand towards the back of your mat. A little bit towards the left side this time. And then from here, left ear down onto the ground. Now you've got your left hand on the floor, if you're not absolutely in agony, just use your left hand and move left and right, very gently, drawing out the fascia adhesions in the back of the shoulder blade. How are you doing? Hi guys. Okay? Yep. Alright. Yeah, just relax. So you don't have to do anything else, you just have to stay there and not do anything. The more you give in to gravity and relax, the easier your body will come into the pose. Bring your knees back to the center, feet back to the ground, adjust the hips, bring the right hand back, and remove the balls, and just lie down on your back with the both shoulders on the ground, and you will immediately feel how your right shoulder is able to melt into the floor more than the left. You can feel a little subtle difference in how much more you're able to drop that right shoulder down now. Mm -hmm. We're going to do the other side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have to. Alright, so use your right hand, hold the ball, lift your left shoulder up and use your left hand to just nudge that right elbow and bring the ball as far behind the left shoulder as you're able to. Keep your knees bent and your feet on the floor. Keep the spine neutral. Shift your body center so that your chest is equally facing the ceiling. Left hand on the floor by the side. Right hand on the floor by the side. And just adjust your shoulders a little bit. You want to try to bring down the left side of the back of your brow. Left side of the waist. Now even though we're doing the exact same sequence on this side, it might feel quite profoundly different. Just relax into that sensation. I tend to find that students feel it more on the left and the right. So we'll see how it goes with you guys.
So you've got another ball in your left hand. We're gonna raise the left hand up and extend the left hand to the top left corner of the mat. Drop that all the way down. Let the arm relax. How does that feel for you? You can try to adjust and do any minor shifting movements. And like I say, intuitively, find the best place for the ball for you. Now from here, press down the left side of the back of your shoulder blade, left side of the back of your front, back side waist. Try to look all the way over towards the right side and bring the right ear towards the ground. Right shoulder should be on the ground. You may hear as you're doing this, clicks and pops in your shoulders, it's all right. You're not breaking anything. Bring your head back to the center. Let's leave that left arm there in a relaxed state. Bring your fingers behind the back of your head and then lift up your head and look at your knees. How about to press down the back of your waist? You've got one more ball in your left hand. Take that ball on top of the first one. Good luck. Shift slightly upwards. Press down into the ball. And extend your left hand again over here. Drop down the back of your head. You may want to do some side to side movements. Now that you've got two balls there, you might want to readjust and accommodate that new placement so you feel both balls equally. Are you alright? Take your right hand once again behind the back of your head, lift up your head again. Take your left hand behind the back of the right shoulder. Use your right hand, hold the elbow, relax the left arm, shift the arm slightly behind, and then slowly drop the arm all the way down. Shoulder all the way down. Back of your brow all the way down, back of your waist all the way down. You can use a little bit of the strength of your legs to draw down the back of your waist and relax into the shoulders. Keep your feet near your hips, press into the ball and lift up. And push up into the ball. And then just relax there for a while. Maybe shift a little bit left and right, see whether you can find a more appropriate space for the ball. Let it penetrate deeper into the interconnective tissue. And slowly lower your waist. Take a breath. And come on up again, lifting the hips up. Pressing into the ball. Swaying gently in the hips, finding the best place for the ball. Lowering all the way back down again. Releasing your right hand. Sorry, releasing your left hand and let the left hand drop over to the left side. Right hand by the side next to your waist. Push your hips a little bit towards the right by an inch, just a cubelix into position. Let's bring the knees towards the chest. Do a little swing, bring your knees over towards the left side this time. And from here, use your left hand, hold the outside of the right knee and adjust down into that spinal twist. Left hand to the ceiling. Palm drops away towards the back of the room overhead. Reach the left hand slightly more to the right side. Use your right hand and do a side to side movement. And relax into the shoulder. Melt down into the ground. Melt into the balls. Whatever sensation you are experiencing, try not to react to that sensation, but instead allow the balls to relax you. That feeling is very temporary.
come back with the hips. Come back with the left arm. Remove the balls. And just relax there for a while. If you like to lie down with your legs straight, you can do that. If you prefer to keep your knees bent, you can do that as well. And just hold one ball in each hand. And just move your leg left and right. And feel the softness in the shoulders. You are able to relax a little bit deeper into the ground. You feel a lot more lightness in your face, in the chest. So we're now going to put one ball on each side. So bend your knees, feet on the floor. One ball in each hand, in the same way that you did. Use your left hand and place the ball behind your right shoulder. Use your left right hand and place the ball behind your left shoulder. Now we're gonna amp it up a little bit. So fold your arms in front of your chest. Try to drop down the back of your waist. And what you can do is just move your shoulders, shrug them up, shrug them down, roll about, and I like you to explore the back of your shoulders with the balls. Right now you should feel a lot more relaxed and there's a lot more gear in the shoulders. Bring your hands, if you want your fingers, bring your hands behind the back of your head, support the weight of the head. Press down the back of your waist, lift your head up and look in front. And try to get as much of your middle back, that's the area between the back of your bra and the back of your waist onto the floor. How's everyone doing? You're going to want to get this on video. Take a deep breath, inhale, move your feet closer to you. Push <laughs> down and back, go. And roll the balls to the back of your bra on your back. Go all the way back and just bring the ball slightly below the back of your bra. I'm using the same ball as you, you know. <laughs> right. Now, look in front. Emma, drop your waist, lift your head. Round your body, crunch up, good. Now, walk back to me. Walk back to your shoulders. Walk back. Walk back to the shoulders. Walk back to the shoulders. And so you're once again back at the start position. And we're just gonna work on that. So press down into the balls. Slide backwards. And then walk back. All the way back in. Relax your face. That's why you're using your arms to help you. Head up, drop your waist, and then roll again, backwards. How's it going? <laughs> Try not to end up on the floor. Anna, how's it, how's it going? It's great. often. That's what she says, because she's on the live feed. <laughs> I'll show, I'll show the classes what to do. And they go like, oh, that looks nice. And then after that, it's like, oh my god. But you know, it gets easier and it gets less painful as you do this because your fascia gets a lot more comfortable. So if you're doing this for the first time or one of the first few times, it tends to be quite intense. And then you get used to it. So normally when we start out, we use softer balls like tennis balls or the tune-up balls. After a while, my students go, do you have anything harder? So yes, you do, eat. <laughs> no, 
it feels easier since, since last week. Yes, exactly. Last week I was so painful I wanted to cry. But this one... It's not that bad. It's not so painful. It's not that bad. My body's used to it now. Yes. All right, we move the balls. <sighs> and sit back up. How do you feel? <sighs> sit back up, sit back up. Oh, <laughs> like. <laughs> and you feel that if you had come here feeling uh, rather sleepy or rather tired, and if you had a lot of heaviness in your energy, you would find now that you're feeling a lot more awake and a lot more comfortable. There's a lot more mobility in the neck, there's a lot more comfort in the shoulders. And if you had come here feeling in a very bad mood, your mood would be a little bit different. There's a lightness that comes to the body. So the fascia, or what we're releasing, is like a, it, it's like a web around your muscles, around all the components in your body. And this web is a protective layer that when you overuse an area or when you are repetitively using an area or you injure a space, the fascia will harden up in the hope of trying to protect you. So as you go through life, you accumulate these points of hardness where it intersects. So the best analogy to understand what fascia is like, fascia is like the Chinese New Year orange. When you peel an orange, it's a whitish film around every single peel of the every single fold of the orange. It is harder where the orange peels intersect and it is sometimes hard so that it becomes very um, difficult to bite through. So what we're rolling on is actually the intersection points where the pieces of your muscle meet or where the tendon meets the bone. So as we move and as we move around in our daily lives, we accumulate this hardness. What we're doing is we're releasing that hardness. So it allows us to then make that connection here to here. So shoulders that are tight, sometimes it's not a hardware issue, it's a software issue. So now your brain knows, I have shoulders, I'm going to relax them. So it allows you to communicate a lot better with the body. We are quite disconnected with our bodies in our um, in our day-to-day -day life, especially if you're so focused on just getting your work done. Many people do not move from the core. So if I were to example to reach for my bottle, someone who is core-centric would go with the core, extend and pick up the bottle and bring it back. Someone who is not would go with the arm, tense the shoulder and pull it back this way. The same movement can accumulate tension or it can accumulate, um, it can free your movement. So the other thing that I teach is also mindful movement, which is not a yoga class, it is a movement class. So we are learning to recalibrate how we move the body, how we orientate from our center. And this allows us to be a lot more in control in the body. It is not yoga because I find that some of what I do is no longer yoga. I find that yoga is not always the solution to every single thing. You know, sometimes you go, oh, I have this pain. Go do yoga class. Sometimes it's not so much that. Sometimes you got to do Pilates. Sometimes you got to just relax. Sometimes you've got to do myofascial release. Sometimes you need a psychiatrist, not a yoga teacher. You know, and sometimes it's just the way that it is. It's always good to explore the body without these labels of what we're doing. All of this sometimes it just responds to what is on trend in the industry. Previously, everyone was doing aerobics like in the 80s. Now we call it Zumba. Now we're going to call it something else in 10 years time. Same with yoga, same with Pilates, same with whatever else it is that we're doing in the gym. So rather than fix it to a label and then conform our movements to what that label re uh, requires us to do, let's break out of that and just move the body as the body is meant to be with natural mobility. Yeah. All right, so the next thing we're going to work on is we're going to work a little bit higher up first before we go lower down onto the traps, the top of the shoulders in this area here. This area retains a lot of tension. So whatever you're feeling here, when we translate that movement slightly upwards and working with the top muscles, it's going to well be a little bit harder. So this is what we're going to do. I will ask you, you might want a side view for this. You're going to lie down on your mats. And you're going to place the two balls on either side of your neck this way. Let the ball sit in the junction where your neck and the shoulders meet. 
shift yourself a little bit upwards so that you're able to wedge the ball under either side of the top of your shoulders like that. If you are lying down and you, uh, you are looking at me from the top view, you can still see the balls because it's still quite high up. I extend my arms up without locking my elbows and I bring the back of my palm to the floor to wedge the ball in place this way. So my action is pushing slightly upwards. Walk your feet a little bit closer to you and lift your hips up first. And you're going to feel maybe 50% of your body weight press into the ball. Now as you're doing this, just keep your head looking centre and upwards. You're going to roll up onto the balls and let your arms be straight. So nothing on my shoulders is actually on the floor now. Everything is on the balls. I let my arms be straight and I'm going to do this. I'm going to swing to the top right corner and back. And then I'm going to swing to the top left corner like this and back, like that. And then just going to go left and right. Left and right. Good luck with this one, right? <laughs> now, bring your hips down. Release the arms first. So what you're going to do is you're going to take one of the balls out. The existing one stays there on the right. I'm going to add one more to this side, just to take it a little bit further out. I'm going to drop my right hand out to the right side this way. The weight of the balls is under the shoulders. I lift my hips up first, and I'm going to go to the side this way. I relax the shoulder side, and then from here, I'm going to go over. I move the shoulder blade up and down, like that. Going up and down. I find when I feel the ball the most that I'm going to push in, into the ball. I use the string of my hips to bear down into this position. I keep my gaze towards the right side and I just relax like that. And smile. Yeah, and smile. Okay. Right? And then you can come back slowly, knees down, knees down, knees down, and bring it all the way back. Right? Let's try this out. So, shift yourself to the top edge of the mat so that you've got a little bit more space and you don't end up knocking over the singing bowls and <laughs> lie down on your back so one ball in each hand place the ball at the junction of where the neck and the shoulder meets wedge it a little bit under the flesh turn your head left and right center that Make sure as you're doing this, you're constantly looking up unless I give the instruction to do otherwise. Raise your arms overhead and drop your arms all the way over to the floor. Now push your arms straight and you'll feel the balls press into your shoulders a little bit. Bring your feet closer, hoist your hips up and push upwards into the balls first. You're still on the floor at this point. Are you alright? <laughs> all right so use your leg strength walk your feet a little bit closer if you need to raise the hips a little bit higher and roll upwards onto the balls <laughs> and then link your hands straighten your arms keep your hips still can you swing your fingers to the right side of the mat and you feel your shoulders roll across the ball and then towards the left side and keep doing that to the left and to the right to the left and to the right everything okay when you swing to the right press a little bit more to the right side ball when you swing over to the left a little bit more to the left side ball <laughs> Yeah, head is on the floor. To the left, to the right. How's everyone doing? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> to the left and to the right. To the left and to the right. If you get tired, you can lower your hips and then come back up again. If you're able to sustain that, you can just stay up all the way. Mm. Are you alright? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Relax your face. <laughs> <laughs> to the left and to the right. 
feel free to linger <laughs> on the side where you feel the ball the most. We all have that one spot. <sighs> to the left and to the right. Now we're going to focus on the left shoulder. So we leave the ball that is already on the left side and take the one on the right side out. Bring it over and just place it next to, get, next to each other in a pair. On top? On top um, top no, on next to each other. On the side. On the side, on the side. Okay. So both are at the top of the shoulders. Let your left hand extend out towards the left side, about 45 degrees away. Bring your feet closer. You need to lift your hips up first and then roll up onto the balls next with the help of your right hand on the floor. Now your right hand will reach over to the left palm and then go over the ball. Over which side? Up and down, towards the back, towards the window that you're facing. Like okay. that? That way. Yeah, that way. Mm. Or if you can just hold it still and not move. <laughs> He's going to want to move up and down. Um, no, just keep your hand there. Okay. And then reach towards, reach your right hand towards the left arm and round your shoulders first. Oh. Yes. Right. And then push your hips higher uh. and roll towards the window where the chair is uh -huh. and back. higher and you'll feel more of the balls. Swing your arms a little bit more to the left and you'll also feel more of the ball. Relax your face, relax everything else. Alright, come on down. Relax first, shift it over towards the right side. So place the two balls in a pair on the right side of the top of your shoulder, as high as you can hold it there. Your right hand goes 45 degrees out towards the right side, a little bit more if you're able to, that locks the ball in place. Move your feet closer to your butt, lift your hips up first. Bring your right shoulder, left shoulder off and your left hand over to your right palm and then go up onto the balls. And then go up and down. And onto the shoulders. You can either move very gently, doing a rolling action, or you can just stay on that one point, round your body and push your hips up, and just relax into the ball. Anna, Hello. how's it going? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Yes, it will. It will because it's <laughs> there. Okay. Yes, it's fine. No, your arms are gonna fall off. It just means that you've not had that circulation go down your arm for a while. If you want, you can squeeze your hand, make a fist, and then relax. Make a fist and relax.
to after a while. Yeah, you do, you do. It's, uh, so it gets more comfortable as you do this. So after about four or five times, you will still feel it, but it won't be, oh my god, I want to die. Yes. All right, release it. Come back down. Ah, feel your shoulders. And sit all the way back up. How does that feel? So we're going to journey downwards into the body. So now we're going to be releasing into the trapezius. And this also is for the intercostal muscles and to release into your breath, the ability to move your shoulders. This also connects to the side of the neck. So this is how you get into position. Really easy. Take the balls in a pair. Lie down to the left half of the mat. Your right hand will extend to the right side with the left hand reach across and place the balls as far over to the right side as you're able to. Just wedge the balls in that position like that. Right hand down on the side, knees in towards the chest. This is really easy. Swing up onto the ball. Stretch the right arm forwards, bend the elbow. And then let your head drop down onto the palms. And then just slide. Alright. So, two balls in the pair. Uh, use your right hand, just leave your right hand on your left shoulder. Use your left hand, reach across and place the balls as far over to the right side as you're able to. Nudge it with your left hand fingers and try to get it below, slightly below the armpit. It's in the area between where the side of your bra is on your ribcage and the side of your armpit. Now, bring your right hand down and you should already feel the balls a little bit. I will ask you to go 45 degrees first so that you don't totally get that sensation immediately. Now, knees towards your chest. Drop your knees first, not yet swing up onto the ball. So just bring your knees a little bit towards the side like a spinal twist. Left hand stretch towards the right side. Three, two, one, up. Just roll up on the ball. Yes. Yup, 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 yup. That's right, that's right. Now bend your right elbow. Place your left hand on the right palm and drop your head down onto the palms. Oh. Alright, stay there. Curl your body rather than arch. And try to get the balls a little bit more towards the back of the body than the exact center. Just a little bit more towards the back. Claire, you might want to move the balls a bit higher up. And then just curl like a prawn and press down into the balls. Now, if you can, your left knee goes to the floor in front of the right knee. That's right. You don't have to do anything, you just have to lie there. Isn't it easy? In my official classes always look very relaxing. If you don't pick up the sound. try to slowly stretch your right arm towards the top of your mat so that you are resting your head, your inside, your right ear on the arm. Do that while still staying on the balls so that you're able to lengthen the muscle. You're able to lengthen the muscle up. And around your back and press down into the balls. There are many, many people who are not breathing right. This, this trigger point release is for the lungs to allow it to enable you to have better breath.
then we're gonna shift to the other side. So shift over towards the left side, the right side. Two balls in the right hand. Reach across your chest, place the balls on the outside of the left side. You may want to lift the left arm, adjust and shift, notch the balls there. From here, let your left hand drop down to the left side, knees in towards your chest. You can bring the knees down towards the side first, like a spinal twist. You'll feel minor pressure on the point of the balls. Take a breath in here, swing up onto the ball. And you want to stretch your left hand more to the left side, so the ball sits more towards the back of your shoulders than the very extreme side. Left elbow bend, right palm on top of left, and then drop your head down and relax down into the ball. Are you right? Do you know what place? Um, something like that. You can extend your left arm gradually overhead. Don't move off the ball so that your neck doesn't match up. And rest your left ear on the left arm. It will feel slightly different. Let the arm be straight. Round or it keeps in a little bit more. How's it going? <laughs> already gone through. <laughs> so the more painful it is, the best, does, is it, does it give an indication that's the right spot? Um, it gives an indication that that's where you have the adhesion in your fascia. If the sensation is so painful that you cannot relax into it, then you have to mild it down a bit, maybe like wrap this in a towel or, you know, or reduce the intensity of this. And then, yes, it would mean that that's where the point would be. It's a, it's a very strange sensation to, to have. It's not like you're hurting yourself, it's just a very intense reaction from the, the nerves in the body. Yeah, so that's good. Yeah, it's, it's good, but of course it's to what you're able to endure. Mm. If you're not able to endure, it will tense up the body, then it'll defeat the purpose of that practice. Mm. All right, put back down. How are you? Ah. Right now, hug your knees into your chest, swing the body up, sit back up. Let me show you the next point that we're going to do. So this one's not that painful. This one's actually quite relaxing. So on the, this is where my waist is on my back. This is where the spine is. I have the left half of the back, the right half of the back this way. I want to place the balls later, just slightly above my waist, one and two like this, to release the quadratus lumborium, the middle of the back where we do all our side movements from. This is an area where many people have compression 
in the lumbar spine so this is going to be a rather sensitive area for some people it's not meant to be extremely painful so we're not really going to grate into it or to push into it the way that we've been doing in the other poses we just want to melt into it and relax so it's really simple all you need to do is lie down take the balls place the first one where the back of your waist is slightly higher than that the two balls are over here like that and all you need to do is just lean down into the two balls like that you will feel this well of course you'll feel it where the balls are but you're going to also feel it somewhere on the front of your hip here all you need to do is make sure that you are dropping down your right butt cheek the same height as the left right side of the bra pressing down as much as the left and then after a while i will ask you to veer a little bit to the right and if you're comfortable just cross the left leg over the right if this is extremely painful just stay here like this and veer slightly towards the side right okay let's do that it's quite easy all right so lie down on your bed keep your knees bent two balls in a pair lift up the right side of your waist and stick the balls one just about a centimeter above the waist the other one is just the top that one the two balls are touching and all you need to do is slowly center your hips and your chest imagine the balls not there and then just lie down like you normally would can you feel the balls good right so all you need to do is just relax there you won't feel just the bottom with that big there you'll feel like you want to lift the ribcage i need you to deliberately relax your ribcage and to breathe into the belly so just let the body relax into the ball and deliberately melt down into it this is a sensitive area of the back even if you don't have any issues with the back like scoliosis or a cervix or any of those things you still want to relax down and relax into that feeling there will be some tingly strange feelings just relax into that let your knees go maybe about three inches towards the right relax into the balls a little bit more if this is all right for you take your left foot up onto the right like you're sitting on a chair and let your left knee slightly towards the right side you can leave your hands on the floor and just relax if you want you can stretch the right hand behind the back of the head and draw down the back of the ribcage and just relax there Come back to the center, remove the balls, and switch to the other side. So we're going to bring the balls on the quadratus lavorium on the left side this time. So the lower one starts where your waist is slightly higher than that. The other one is directly above that one. Bring down the left side of your waist, left butt cheek on the ground left side of the back of your ribcage down on the floor you might have felt one side more than the other just relax down into that position drop down the ribcage let's bring the left foot over the right like you're sitting on a chair and veer a little bit to the left if you're comfortable with that if you want, left hand behind the back of your head. And just relax into that position.
Come back to the center. Let's remove the ball. Hug your knees into your chest. Tuck your nose towards the knees. And then swing the body all the way back up. And sit back home. You should feel a lot more comfort in the back as you're doing that. If you find that this helps you a lot, feel free to replicate this practice and stay longer in the points that help you. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to go through the entire body. So feel free to do this on your own and to practice this. Anna has balls available if you want to get them from her. So this is to release the IT band. You're gonna bring your right leg straight, left knee bend, lie down on your back this way. The length of your arms, the two balls would go here like this on the outside of the thigh. Just leave the balls there, bring your knee into the chest. Right hand to the right side, swing over, lie on the balls, and bring the left knee down. And then you tuck your head, and you let me Look at this, I flex the foot. And then I point. Flex. And point, like that. Right? Come back. Let's try that out. So come, lie down on your back. Take the balls. Bring the balls to the outside of your right thigh. Left knee in. Keep the balls in that position. Right hand out to the right side. Lean a little bit towards the right side with the left leg first. So stay at a 45 degree angle and just allow the outer thigh to stretch. Flex back your right foot toes. Lean to the side, swing up onto the balls, and bring your knee down onto the floor. Oh. <laughs> Slowly. Straight in the right leg, straight in the right leg. Good. So you anchor your right foot toes onto the floor. And what you're going to do is you're going to swing, point the toes. And flex the foot and roll slightly up, slightly down the outer thigh. And are you alright? Yeah. Alright, there we go. Slightly up, slightly down. Or stay still if it's very overwhelming. And just relax. Yield into the ball. If you can, try to transfer the weight of the ball slightly towards the out the lower part. The outer part, the meat, the back part, sorry, of your outer thigh. So your if let's say you would divide the outer thigh into half, you would be on the looks, the behind half. That's where we want to be. And shift a little bit upwards that way, and then go that way a bit. Yes. And a little bit more. And stay right there. Oh, yes. Okay, stay right there. Come on back, drop back down, you got to do the other side, I think you lost the ball, it's over here. Oh, whose ball is that? Just a minute. Uh, I don't got my ball. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you want this ball? Okay. Alright, so lie down on your back, let's bring it over to the left side. So with a straight left arm, place the ball on the outside. Bend your right knee, 90 degrees, right knee. And we're going to bring the right leg over, slightly to the side. 
Take a breath and go for it. Swing over. And bring the knee all the way down to the floor. And a straight leg. Straight left leg. Yes, that's right. Great, Claire. Bring your knee down to the ground. Good. <laughs> yeah, you kind of lost. <laughs> it should be more to the outside of the thigh rather than the rather than the back. Yes. Straight knee all the way down to the floor. <laughs> Try to shift a little bit upwards towards the windows. <laughs> Whatever we're doing is more of an introduction than a practice itself. So it's just to introduce you to your trigger points, your myofascial points. And you can practice this on your own on a regular basis. So this practice is to enable you to do this on your own as well, not to just come for the sessions. Although I do have these weekly sessions of my official release, I do the same bloody thing every week and people just come for it every week. Even though they have the balls and they can do this by themselves and they know exactly what I'm gonna do, they come for the class every week. So maybe you just need to be put in these yeah, you need to be put in these positions rather than, you know, to go through it. But it's a good thing to do on your own. So the best thing you can buy for yourself for your self practice is actually two balls. How's it going? This has been painting in it. Seriously. Anna, you need to roll to the back of your thigh more than the up here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. Now oh. stay on the ball, stay on the ball. You're not on the ball anymore. Stay on the ball. Yeah. Okay. Yep, yeah, stay on the ball. Hug your knees into your chest. Sit all the way back up. <clears throat> How are you feeling? <laughs> Alright, so what's the rolling bit for? Now that we've done the <laughs> now that we've done the release, this is what you're gonna do. I wanna show you. So you sit with your right leg straight and your left knee bent and you're going to drop the outer side of your foot to the floor. So I'm not directly on my butt, I'm actually more to the outside of my butt this way. So that I'm on the outer side of the thigh. Take the rolling pin and sit on it like that. Isn't it cute? It's silicone. And then roll. And back. So right knee bend, a uh, left knee bend, right leg straight. Drop the small toe to the floor. Shift your hips so that you're sitting on the outside of the thigh. Take that rolling pin, lift up your butt and sit on the rolling pin. Now move your hands behind a little bit. Look at your hands and move towards your palms. And bring that rolling pin between, just before your knee and just before your hip. Remember the left side is the strong one. Notice that I always start the right side. So works with the rolling pin. It works with um, the foam roller. It works with the, the roller with the the bumps on it. I have a student who's put two cans of mushroom soup and she ties it together with scotch tape and she uses that. Anything that rolls. Anything that rolls is fine. 
the pool noodle works well also if you want something a little bit softer. If you have lower back pain, this is very difficult to do. That means you should do it or you shouldn't do it? It means you should do it, but you need a softer object. Okay. All right, come back. And let's try the other side out. So left leg straight, flex into the foot. Let's pick up the butt, place it there, sit on the mat, roll on the, on the rolling pin, and move along. Take your time to roll. Yeah, the slower you go, the better. Amanda, people are asking about lower back problems. Can you tell more about that? what you should do? Re um, if your lower back pain is caused by tightness in the IT band, that thing that we just did, the rolling of the rolling pin, will be able to release that. The rolling pin and the balls. But if you've got lower back pain, this is going to be quite intense. So you'll need to use the tennis balls or you need to use a softer roll like a pool noodle or something even like a rolled up towel and then you just lean into it and then you move and then lean into it that will also help to release out that position as well um, lower back pain also if it is from the compression in the lumbar spine also the balls that we did the one on the two sides like that when you were lying down so to release the quadratus of forum to release into that spinal twist so you will find that if you do this on a regular basis, it will actually aid people who are experiencing lower back pain. But everyone has lower back pain for a different reason. So it is really to find that out. And of course, it would always help to see a doctor to get it you know, diagnosed properly with an MRI, just so that you know that what you have is muscular or whether it's in the bones or whether it's something that requires a lot more help. How are you doing? <laughs> come back, come back. All right, so this is the last thing that we're gonna do before some of you, I know some of you need to rush off to work. So bend your knees this way and sit. Anna! <laughs> was running away. Come back. Come back. So this is the last thing we're gonna do. Bend your knees. Yes, this is good for lower back pain. Take your right foot up onto the top of your left knee and flex your foot. <clears throat> and stretch your hip. Boobs higher than your thigh. Bring your chest up and <coughs> lean in this way. Take the ball in your right hand. Put your left hand on the floor. Lift your butt up. Take the ball on the outside of your butt where your underwear is. Now lift up your left hip. Hide in the right and go forwards. Oh, back. Yeah. Circle around. Get your butt higher. Press down into the ball. Make sure that your left butt is higher than the right, Anna. Lift up your hip. Anna, lift up your hip. There, lift up your Are you on the ball? Yes. The ball is on the outside of your butt, not the center of your ass crack. <laughs> that way. That way. That's, that's a different thing. <laughs> All right, so bring your chest a little bit closer. And bring your left hand up. Hold the knee. And if you can, bring the palm over to the side. Oh, yeah. And just hold that there. Just hold that there. Until that sensation dissipates a little bit. Go forwards a little bit. Just a little bit towards me. A little bit towards me, yes. Right there. So me, everyone has a lot of arm strength. Relax into the ball. <laughs> Relax into the ball. See, so I tell you, they're shy until they start. And then after that, it's off. Cool. 
Come on back. Ah. Feet down, sit back up. Let's take the left leg up. You know the left side will be a little bit more, right? Lift the chest up. Try to bring your chest a little bit higher than your calf and bring it in so you're feeling that stretch, first of all. So the ball is now in your left hand. Put your right hand on the floor. Lift your backside up. Put the ball on the outside of your back. Swing up onto the side. Go forwards and a little bit to the side. And roll around in a circular manner. And try to find where you feel the ball the most. And then drop into the ball. Oh, that's a lot of my are you sure it's going to go up? Yes, it will go up. Really? Really? It will go up. Yeah, my nerves. Yes. Um, it's supposed to. It's supposed to. So whenever you're ready, you can take your right hand up and bring it to the knee or bring it over to your side. so that even though all we're doing is sitting down and lying down on balls that you're actually breaking quite a sweat. <laughs> That's from the pain, I think. <laughs> it's from your blood flow, actually. I am one minute. Uh -huh. <laughs> you need to hold the flow. You need to hold it for actually two and a half minutes for the blood flow to really take effect. But we're doing everything for one minute just so that you can you, you, yeah get used to it. All right, come back. <laughs> ah, lie down on your chest. So facing towards the front. One ball in each hand. Reach back with the balls and rest your chin on the ground for a while. Tuck your toes in. Lift up each thigh and place the ball in the center, front of each thigh. And then point up your toes and let your knees drop into the ground. Now you can shift your thighs in and out and allow the ball to find the center intersection of the four quadricep muscles. Mm -hmm. There are four there, yeah? not just one. Now bring your hands under your chair, under your face, tuck your elbows under your body and lift your hips off. Tuck your toes in, roll forward and back. On the front of the back. Go all the way up near to the all the way forward. How's it going? Not as painful as some of them. Not as bad as some of them. It's actually this is quite a nice one. Yeah. There's actually no physical way to stretch your core. So for the people that exercise a lot, this is the best way to actually release the quads without giving strain to the knee. It's quite nice actually. It's just not really this. <laughs> and stand on your knees, one ball at the center of each calf muscle. Not in the knee itself, but in the widest, fleshiest part, center of the calf muscle. Sit down. Butt all the way down to heels. Now get my yoga classes. <laughs> it all the way down. 
All the way down. All the way down. I'm using the same balls as you, but yeah, but you got five meters practice. <laughs> So you're watching this in um, after the se after the session. Feel free to leave comments down so that I'll be able to respond to them after that as well. Or just drop me a private message if your if your question is more private. Yeah.